Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and WandaVision's finale still inspires new questions for how Wanda's crisis will continue in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Like, what exactly happened to the boys? What is she doing in this post credit scene? And what was just unleashed, other than apparently all the dogs in my neighborhood? I don't care if she's friendly, this city isn't your dog park. As a psycho forever on the Mephisto train, I did begin to make the case for how, despite him being a total no-show in WandaVision, the series absolutely laid the tracks for his arrival in the future, so that maybe at the bottom of this ravine the train is crashing into is actually a Temple of Doom track extension, upon which our insanity can stick the landing and merrily roll along. <laughs> Rewatching this finale episode over and over, discovering new clues each time, and learning more details from the director and the showrunner, folks, a descent into hell, or some comic booky version of hell, in Multiverse of Madness is looking even more likely after this finale. That's right, folks, like a child clinging to hope that daddy will show up to my birthday this year, I believe Mephisto is still coming. Now, I know what you're gonna say. Oh, look, boss found something new to point out scream Mephisto. Hey, the difference between me and your hilarious DiCaprio meme is, I don't just point. I leave a trail of treats for you to find the devil yourself. And you know you Hansels and Gretels love it, now hop in the oven. So, in the final episode, the defeated Agatha warns Wanda. You have no idea what you've unleashed implying some darker threat that Wanda, as the fully empowered Scarlet Witch with the ability to tap into alternate realities and dimensions, might be in the process of opening the Pandora's box too. And the post credit scene follows up on this, showing Wanda using astral projection to read the Darkhold until she hears the voices of her sons, Billy and Tommy. <laughs> Now, we still do not know exactly what these two kids were. If they were just another product of Wanda's Hex Chaos magic, like a lot of stuff in Westview, A, why didn't we just see Wanda create them the way she created Vision? B, why did they rapidly age beyond Wanda's control within sitcom decade jumps? C, why are we hearing their voices now, apparently coming from the Darkhold? And D, why did Wanda, in her goodbye to them, say this? Boys, thanks for choosing me. Your mom. They chose Wanda? That's not how natural conception works. The MCU doesn't abide by Pixar's soul logic. Some external sentience must have brought these boys into Westview. Now, I know I've brought this up dozens of times, but just a reminder for anyone just tuning in, classically in the comics, Wanda's sons, Billy and Tommy, mysteriously appeared in her world the same way they do here in WandaVision, and these boys were later revealed to be, unknowingly even to them, pieces of the soul of the demon Mephisto, assisted by his minions like the witch Agatha Harkness in a plot to brainwash Wanda. Now, that exact Mephisto backstory obviously did not play out in WandaVision. Despite clues like Fietro, aka Ralph, under the control of Agatha calling the boys literal demon spawn, the series showrunner Jack Schaefer said that when it came to Mephisto, grief was enough of a villain for Wanda. And director Matt Shackman on Mark Bernardin and Kevin Smith's Fat Man Beyond show similarly laughed off the Mephisto speculation. Like, he's gotta be Mephisto. He's gotta be some evil Marvel guy. Everyone was Mephisto. Everybody was Mephisto. But despite all this, WandaVision did go to great lengths to at least plant the seeds of satanic witchcraft and demons in the MCU, Agatha Harkness and a coven whose incantations are spoken in Latin, the Darkhold, the Book of the Damned, as she calls it. You know what damned refers to, folks? Souls burning in hell. Hell, the director even revealed a deleted scene in which that rabbit, Senor Scratchy, was revealed to be a dis skies for a monstrous demon. So while WandaVision may have punted on a physical Mephisto cameo, which I agree would have been an insane ask, the finale episode setups for Wanda's return and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness have Mephisto's fiery fingerprints all over them. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for curious creative folks. Skillshare lets you explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Skillshare 
Skillshare offers classes designed for real life. You can learn and grow with short classes that fit any schedule. They have classes and topics new Rockstars fans will enjoy like animation, film, and music production. One of their film and video classes that looks really cool is how to make dope low budget films, taught by filmmaker Julian Klepper. The film covers everything from writing on a budget to casting, hiring a crew, shooting the film, and editing. No matter what 2021 brings you, spend it creating something meaningful with Skillshare's online classes. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning. There are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so that you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And the first 1,000 of our subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. Wanda uses astral projection, a nod to Doctor Strange using this same kind of spell to study more spell books as he sleeps. However, every other character we have seen use astral projection in the MCU must leave their physical body behind as it is incapacitated. A soul can only be active in one place at a time. That's the rule. Stephen Strange, the several times he does this in Doctor Strange, the Ancient One when she lays dying on the operating table, Bruce Banner leaving his Hulk body sleeping in Endgame. So for Wanda to be awake during her astral projection, two souls suggest that she might already be pairing with an alternate reality version of herself, controlling both. Why not just flip through the dark hold herself? It is just a book. Well, maybe she's using this astral projected form to keep any curses embedded in that book's pages from harming her physical body. Now, cracking open this old book, its illustrations show a form of the prophesied Scarlet Witch outlined in a hexagon, which we can surmise from the show is basically the geometric shape a new reality takes. And then on the opposing page, we see a series of overlapping circles. All this could be depicting the Scarlet Witch as a nexus being has control over creating a reality and can tap into other alternate pre-existing realities. And now she could be using the Darkhold to peer into those alternate realities. Why? Looking for one reality in which her children exist. Very similar to how Doctor Strange, using the Time Stone, looked into various alternate futures for one victorious one. The scene even underlines the Doctor Strange parallel by playing the Doctor Strange theme during this. And now Wanda has found her kids. But why are these boys crying out for help? Think about it. If they were just Billy and Tommy living their alternate lives undisturbed, why are they now under duress, calling for some alternate reality mommy to come save them? These cries of help must be bait for Wanda, the way Agatha used the boys as bait in the finale. A siren call from the Book of the Damned designed to lure the Scarlet Witch into a dimension where she thinks she'll find her kids, but when she gets there, she only finds the foreign source of their arrival to Westview, the reason they chose her, the unleashed threat a satanic demon-possessing witch warned her about, Mephisto. Since this series loved its Wizard of Oz references, think of the boys' cries here as the cries for Dorothy from her loved one back home, which is actually a deceptive taunt. Where are you? It's me, it's Annie M. I'm here in Oz, Annie M. I'm locked up in the witch's castle. I'll give you Annie M, Marvel is giving us an anti Mephisto. By the way, it always freaked me out how she turns to look at us there as if she could do this to us watching at any time. Now, to many of you, Multiverse of Madness looks like it could just be setting up the Scarlet Witch as the villain of that story. But I really think this is more complicated than that. That Wanda is not a villain, but rather just a misunderstood kind of patient, chasing a rabbit down a hole rupturing universes as she goes, in need of a physician's healing powers. We needed the series of WandaVision to give us the emotional underpinnings of this madness. But now that we know what's going on inside Wanda's head, let the madness begin. Support our madness here at New Rockstars by checking out one of our many great merch options at newrockstarsmerch.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstars. Subscribe to New Rockstars for everything Marvel. Thank you for watching, my pretties. <laughs>